Well guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, you guys saw us get our first startup on the Hawkeye. If you guys stay towards the end, you guys saw that I was unable to get this car turned off. I was panicking, I was unplugging the battery, then I realized the car was still running. So then the next thing, I unplugged the alternator, which eventually killed the car. But as you guys saw in the video, I was panicking like crazy. That was so terrifying. I completely forgot that this car had a remote start system, which I am not familiar with at all. Um, so that was a panic. The remote was dead and that's how I've always killed the car in the past But granted that was ten months ago completely forgot that was the thing a lot of you guys are saying Why didn't you just kill the car like I mentioned in the video the slave cylinder on this car was not bleeding So we were unable to put this car in gear So we were not able just to stall out the car But I did figure out the issue with the remote start and that is thanks to you guys in the comments I would have never realized this was an issue I would have ripped out this entire remote start system and the to kill this car, it was beyond simple. I obviously panicked right away when I pulled the key out and the car was still running. I immediately got out and didn't know what to do. But apparently all you have to do is touch the brake and the car turns off or you just need to shut your driver's door and then it kills the car. Now I've already tried this off camera and it does work. So thankfully I don't have to go through and completely rip out the remote start system as I was going to do as I was led to believe that this was wired incorrectly, but really it was just my lack of knowledge with remote starts. In the last video, I told you guys it was a less than ideal first setup on this car. The coolant system wasn't fully bled as I ran out of coolant and then our slave cylinder was not bleeding. So all we were able to do was turn on this car and that is it. But this morning, I picked up a few more quarts of coolant. We're gonna go ahead and bleed the coolant system. And I also figured out our slave issue. Right here on my table, this was the brand new slave that I had in the car. I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart and show you guys what I found. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove this rubber boot. We have our slave cylinder taken apart. This is how it orients inside of the slave. When I took this apart, I discovered a ton of aluminum shavings. It's not really focusing, it's hard to see. But if you see the coloring is missing towards the seal, this thing somehow got warped and messed up inside of the slave cylinder and I actually found a ton of aluminum threads missing, or not threads, but material missing from this piece. But when we were going to bleed this slave, the boot was filling up with pressure and fluid, which is not normal. You should never have fluid that makes it this far, as that is what these seals are for, to keep all the fluid in. We kept having fluid escape and taking it apart, it is very apparent why that was happening. So even when the fluid wasn't building up into the boot, it was building up with pressure and it was just leaking pressure this entire time. It always sounded like that and I can never trace what was leaking and we found our culprit here. I don't even know how long I spent bleeding that slave, but we found the issue why it would not ever bleed. So we went ahead and tossed in the OEM one. It still looks pretty clean. I just wanted everything to be brand new. But at the end of the day, a slave cylinder is a slave cylinder. And with this on, we are finally building some pressure. So today we are going to finish up our bleeding process on that slave, get the coolant system bled, and we need to finally go ahead and install our cat back exhaust. But of course, we are still waiting on our intake and our bypass valve to show up. Those are out for delivery this week, which means at the end of this week, hopefully we can get a day in with Josh and get this thing on the dyno. Which I'm really, really excited for. One, for this car to be done, tuned, and we can do some street videos for you guys. But also, I am doing a rebuild series starting December that I'm really excited for. And I need this car to be done first. First things first, we have the car up on all fours. We're gonna go ahead and install our Gretti catback exhaust, which we just have laying right here. We meant to do this in the last video, but if you guys recall, I ordered the wrong size exhaust hangers. And instead of just ordering new ones, I decided to drill these out to fit. So maybe a little bit janky, but it works. It's all rubber. I don't think it matters anyway. And it saves us like 50 bucks.
Now, I don't know why I just realized this, but the previous owner did a weird bumper cut, but truthfully, I am kind of a fan of how it sits. Now, I went with a little bit quieter of an exhaust. Normally, I always throw a tow maze on every car I get just because I like the loudest sound possible. But this exhaust setup should be pretty tame. We have a catted Cobb downpipe with a Gretti catback exhaust, which has a muffler and a resonator. So this thing should sound pretty tame, but still amazing. All right, we have this thing full of coolant. Now, a lot of people don't know this. Um, when you have an expansion tank on your STI, this is the highest point of the car. So this is where you wanna bleed your coolant system from. So we filled the radiator, capped it off, and now we are gonna be bleeding the system through our expansion tank. turn on your heat all the way blast on your feet and face and make sure it's recirculating and then wait for this to have warm air. It's a very easy way to know if your coolant system is close to getting bled or it is bled. And then to kill the car, it's still running. Actually, I wanna try this door method. There we go. So I think it's like a 10 second delay when you shut your driver's door, but there we go. It killed the car. You could also, if you don't want to wait, then. Thank goodness I grabbed the key. Um, <laughs> what? Uh. I have no idea what is happening right now. I've been trying to unlock this door for like a couple minutes now and it won't unlock. And of course our remote start thing is dead as well. So I might have to end up going to grab a battery to unlock it through the remote because this key is not working. I, this is the only place that has a keyhole. I feel like I'm losing my damn mind. There's so many small weird messed up things on this car. Oh my goodness, dude. I wanted you to hurry home at Jonesing for snacks so bad. <laughs> dude, what the hell? <laughs> I was seconds away from calling a locksmith, but we got the door open, guys. Regardless, we're gonna need to go through and figure out if it is a key issue, or maybe they put the assembly back together incorrectly. Regardless, this key should be able to unlock this door and it doesn't. I even tried unlocking the trunk so I could crawl through and unlock it. That did not work. This key does not work for any of the locks on this car except the ignition. It is now the next day. Last night, I had a very fun package show up. Unfortunately, it is not the intake that is coming in a few days from now, but we got our JDC titanium goodies. JD Customs is an amazing company that I'm proud to work with and they make the coolest titanium products for your vehicles. Went through and picked up all the titanium caps. That way we can get rid of all of these gross yellow OEM caps and engine bay. It will all be gorgeous titanium. But then we also got a very nice titanium piece that is the alternator cover with the Remy STI engraved into it. And I have a discount code for you guys to use on their site. It's going to save you 10% off every JDC product they have. The code is Remy STI. Check out the website and see if there's anything you guys wanna pick up for your car. Now, unfortunately, I am missing my OEM spacers for this alternator cover, but I can go ahead and place this on just so you guys can kind of see what this looks like. Well, let's go ahead and start throwing on all our new caps. And there we go, we have all of the caps put on and that makes it look so much better getting rid of all of the yellow gross OEM caps that I absolutely hate. 
The last thing we need to put on is the oil dipstick, which is right here. Now, if someone in the comments can answer this for me, that would be absolutely amazing. I was trying to figure out how to separate the dipstick from the OEM handle. I ended up taking a hammer and I just broke it apart, which it did work, but I feel like there has to be a better solution to get the dipstick removed. And the last finishing piece is this gorgeous titanium dipstick. This completely transformed how the engine bay looks and I absolutely love it. Another friendly reminder, make sure to go check out JD Customs them right there. I'll have them linked down below and use code REMYSTI. It is going to save you 10% off everything. And not only do they have fun accessories like this, but they also make a ton of hardware. Every single bolt in your engine bay, you can replace it with titanium. I'm about to go through and replace all of these crusty bolts with some gorgeous polished titanium. But with all that being said, I think that is going to wrap up today's video. We now have a working clutch. So we can finally drive this thing once our intake shows up, which shows it's coming tomorrow. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and install the intake, the new bypass valve, drop this car on the ground, and we're gonna go driving. Which I am so beyond excited for. Um, the build process is always fun, but the real fun, at least for me, is being able to drive the car after you build it and put it together. Get some fun reactions. This should be an absolute blast. Plus it is getting winter time here. Let's see if there's still some snow out here. Eh. Regardless, it is winter time, which means we're gonna have snow. We have a shoe brew, all wheel drive. We're gonna have some fun, but also make sure you guys are subscribed and stay tuned. This video is gonna be coming out December 1st. We are doing Vlogmas this year, and this series we are gonna be doing should be absolutely amazing, and by far my favorite series we have done on this channel so far. We're bringing the Honda back, guys. Um, so make sure you guys stay tuned. I'm going to try my absolute best to get daily videos for you guys. It might be difficult on some days just because the build on that car is going to take a lot and a lot of time. This Honda series will be by far my favorite series as truthfully, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of building Subarus. As you guys may know, if you guys have been following me for a while, I have taken apart and built my 17 STI so many times now where it's not really enjoyable building this platform. I wanna do something that is different, if that makes any sense. So as Honda, I don't know the first thing about that car, so it should be an absolute blast and pretty funny.